Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer. Welcome back to Farming Simulator 17. Welcome back to Coldborough Park Farm in the UK. We should call it Canola Park Farm. No, no, we really shouldn't. I was thinking about that earlier because I spent a few hours off camera bringing in our canola harvest. And that looks like this. You can see right up here, if I can zoom in a little bit. A lot of canola on this farm, all canola. Field 3 and Field 6 we do not own. Field 3 is canola. Field 10 is canola as well, and I debated buying these two, but we just don't have the money right now. And with the equipment that we have, it's been it's been an interesting canola harvest, I must say. I must say. So, it's all in. Other than Field 5. And that's where we are right now. We're up on top of the hill. We're up at the main farm. We're going to bring in Field 5. That won't take long. And while that's going on, I'm going to do uh, a couple other things that I wanted to that I wanted to tell you about, show you, etc. So we've been getting about 10,000 euro per tipper of canola, and I feel really lucky because the best price for canola right now is at the BGA, which is on our side of the map. In fact, I can show you that too. This is our farm right here. Let me zoom in again. This is our farm right up here on top of the hill. This is the BGA to buy. And there's a gate right down here at the bottom corner of Field 7. Let's you out right onto the highway just a couple hundred yards from the BGA. If that was not the case, we would have to go over to the mainstay. I'm sorry, the Wednesday stores, not mainstay. Where'd that come from? The Wednesday stores all the way literally on the opposite side of the map. And because I'm a glutton for punishment, I left the traffic on. I love this map. This is, this is one of the first maps, I have to say, in Farm Sim that ever really, like, spoke to me. You know, that really kind of gave me an indication of what this sim could be. I love this map, but I hate the traffic. It, the traffic is so bad that it makes me wonder if it's not an inside joke. Like, it's that bad. It's, mm, it's there's way too much of it. It's It goes way too fast and it's way too aggressive. But you know what? We're keeping it. I ain't as scared. So... If the better price was at the Wednesday stores, we would need to drive all the way across the map in our TW. And with more realistic, with Gearbox, we are really fighting to move some equipment around. Golly, I don't know why the, the uh, base camera in this mod starts you so far away. There we go. There we go. Right. Let the RPM come up a little bit. And let's head across the head across the meadow here. So yeah, we got a good price. We're getting about ten thousand per tipper. I've sold four tippers so far, and we have a hundred thousand in our in our bunker. And I do want to wait for a better price. I'm hoping we get one. Right? That would be unfortunate if we didn't even get a better price. Like, if the price now is as good as it gets. But I think, in fact, moment, please. Throw this on. And Seasons is here, is it not? Yeah, it is. So, uh, canola. Canola, canola. Yeah, our price right now is actually about as low as it's ever going to be. And if we sell it in the winter, we could get, that looks like about a third more. Yeah, I'd call that about a 30% bump. So we'll hang on to it, and we'll sell that in the winter, that other 100,000, 100,000 liters. And in the meantime, I think when we're all said and done, we'll have about 45,000, about 50,000 euro from canola this summer. And again, I'm not complaining. I always sound like I'm complaining, and then I say I'm not complaining, which makes it really sound like I'm complaining. Oh, I know we can fit it through here because we fit it through all the other gates, but I did just bump one of the posts. I bumped it gently, though. Gently. Right. So we need to, as they say, we need to open this field a little bit. We're going to do that right like this here. Try not to waste too much crop. Yeah. Hardly any. Hardly any. Okay, good on us. Set the cruise control. And here we go. So yeah, um, I, I, 
I'm, I don't want to say frustrated, but I continue to be sort of perplexed by the, the power of silage in Farm Simulator. And it does make me wonder, it does make me wonder if that's not some kind of a, like a, a bailout for you, you know? If everything else is going wrong, just get some silage in and you can kind of save your farm, save your economy. But we will make, for, for the size of all these fields, right, these six canola fields, the whole, I don't know, like, eastern quarter of the map that's a that's a lot of fields it's a lot of canola we'll still make like two or three times as much money just from a couple small grass fields it doesn't make sense to me but you know that's how it is and we're, we're pretty heavily modded seasons mods the economy pretty good uh, and i know uh some of the black panther group mods also do some things with crop prices and I mean, we're, we're pretty heavily modded on the, on the economy side, and it's still doing this. So I feel like if that was something that was really, truly, like, broken, broken, then some of these mod makers would nerf it as well. Does that make sense? I think it does. So, I don't know. Maybe that's just the way it's supposed to be. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, maybe that's the way it is in real life. It just doesn't seem... It seems like if that was the case, then all farmers would just grow grass you know the whole world would look like indiana Moment. big turn here I, you don't know what that means i'll tell you i grew up in pennsylvania and i have driven back and forth on the freeway system in the eastern part of the united states the the rust belt the midwest i mean i don't know how pennsylvania ohio and indiana are considered the midwest when they're like a long afternoon's drive from the atlantic ocean but whatever Anyway, when you drive through Indiana, there are places on the freeway where you're driving past sod farms. Literally farms that just grow sod for like golf courses and stuff. And I, I'm talking like industrial sod, like not the stuff you get down at the Home Depot to like put next to your garden path. I'm talking like great big industrial machines pulling up like a 30 foot wide swath of, of sod for like a baseball field or football field or something. So it's, it's industrial grass farming. But when you're driving through there, you, you get to that place on the freeway. There's several of them, but when you get to that place on the freeway, and like both sides of the freeway, as far as the eye can see, it's just beautiful green grass. It looks like you're on the biggest golf course in the world. So when I make a joke about, you know, if, if grass was that profitable, grass for silage was that profitable, then the whole world would look like Indiana. That's what I'm talking about. If you had no idea what I meant, that's what I meant. So. I'm going to get up here to the top of this hill, and I'm going to put it on a worker. There goes my voice. I'm going to put it on Clara. She's been pretty good for us, and she has a lot to learn. And what I tend to do is, uh, with my hired workers, I tend to put the least experienced one on a job so that they level up faster. That's just me. Right, so let me go show you something while we're letting Clara work. Because we're done. We're done. In fact, let me hop back in our seasons menu because if we go back here, we see that in another few game days, we're going to be able to plant winter wheat and winter barley. And as of today, we can plant winter canola. So I really want to think about what I want to do with these fields. I don't know that we want to be just a canola farm, but... It's also one of the most profitable crops, and you can plant it now, right? Which may spread our harvest out a little bit more, and instead of having all of our canola come in essentially at once, maybe we plant a little bit now, a little bit in the spring, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Uh, options abound. Let me show you what I got here. So we did sell all that silage at the BGA, and you know, we now have digestate. So I went ahead and got an Abbey slurry tanker, because it's a British map, of course, the classic. Now, it says high spec. This is an Abbey. This is high spec. There is a debate. There is a debate. People go back and forth about it. But regardless, I got one of those. We can go down and, and get some digestate and start laying in these fields. However, however, we are also running two mods. We're running the... Oh, uh, the, uh, not green manure, we're running the, uh, it's the chaff mod, essentially. 
And any chaff that you spray in a field counts as a layer of fertilizer after you cut it in, I want to say. After you, after you get it into the field somehow, either by plowing, cultivating, hitting it with a subsoil or whatever. So we are running that mod. And because this is canola and it can only be chaff because there cannot be a straw swath, I believe that as we start to prep these fields, they already have a layer of fertilizer on them, right? From the canola chaff. And we're also running the manure mod, which means that any hard manure or slurry that we apply, again, when we cut it in, will count as two layers of fertilizer. So I believe, I believe, we do need to throw a little gas in the T-dub, get this going. So I believe that our fields are, for all intents and purposes, triple fertilized for free right now, at least as far as the digestate lasts, if that makes sense. So I don't know, like looking at field seven, that's probably where I'll start with the digestate because it's at the BGA and the BGA is closest to field seven. I don't know if, well, we, I think we have about 120,000 liters of digestate. I don't know how far that will go in field seven. It could cover all of it. It could cover half of it. It could cover all of it, and we still have plenty left over. So essentially what I'm gonna do is get after some fields with the subsoiler and the cultivator. All right, and we don't need to fill this thing. We just need to get enough in there so we don't run out. But you see what I'm getting at, right? That it's possible that we will really not have to spend a lot of money on fertilizer this season or the rest of this season. And we did spend a ton on fertilizer last year. Now we will need to continue using, I think, synthetic fertilizer, pellet fertilizer makes the most sense for grass because you can't plow it in. And so you don't get some of those buffs. But I think, I think we're going to save a ton there. And we own our mowers. We do have those beautiful, uh, are they, is it Krona? No, it's Fent. It's Krona. I don't remember. But we have those beautiful butterfly mowers on the Optum. And we can lift and lower those belts on the back so we can either spread to hit with a tether for hay or we can make a swath and pick it up either with a forage wagon, which we own, right? We already own that. And uh, we don't need a rake. So I think we, we made some interesting decisions early days and it was a little dicey, but you know, as of right now, I think we've got about 50,000 euro of canola in the bunker, right? And we have an 85,000 euro loan. And we, and we have 50,000 in our checking account. So, oh, oh, gearbox, get up there, get up there, come on. There we go. Maybe. <laughs> yep, there we go. So you see what I'm saying. Like, we could pay off uh, about 40% of our loan just with what we have in our checking account. More than that, we could pay off half of it. And then pay off the, the other half of it with the canola that we have stored. So we're technically out of debt right now. And this is our first summer of our first season. So we're, we're doing okay. We've got plenty of latitude. And at the same time, we are going to be spending a lot less money because we have things like that, uh, that slurry spare. Am I making sense? Am I even making sense right now? It feels like a Monday. And then it also sort of feels like a Friday, and it's neither. It's a Wednesday. Wednesday for me, Thursday for you. All right, you know what? Let me do this. I'm going to wait till Clara makes her turn at the top there. And then I'm going to back up as Clara comes up this length so that I don't get in her way when she makes this next turn. Yep. I think we'll do that. So I did want to I did want to finish something. I realized when, when we were on Domus Laskowitz last week, maybe the week before, I realized I never finish anything on camera. I start things and then I say, I'll finish this off camera, and I do. But these uh, AMSR, ASMR, ARMS, you know what I'm talking about. The world's most satisfying videos. They're all about um, finishing things and seeing things kind of resolve themselves. And I thought maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll finish something off. So we're going to finish canola harvest on camera. That's what we're doing here. And then off camera, like I said, we need to decide what we want to do now. 
I got in the habit because I'm always like with seasons I'm always kind of trying to like push ahead I'm always worried about time running out of time so I got in the habit of prepping my fields in the summer and fall whether I planted them that fall or not like for a winter crop and then I got to thinking that maybe that's something you don't want to do and again this is a question for a real farmer maybe that's something you don't want to do and the reason why is because it's going to rain and you're going to have drainage and you're going to have compaction and you're going to have all kinds of things happen right like you're going to have that soil settle over the winter because it's going to be wet right and the water's going to press down on it and you know you aerate it right cultivate it you aerate it you get it all you know fluffed up there so you get oxygen down to the little microbes and your soil can be all good and happy and then you let it set all winter and compact and right and it's not ready to plant in the spring so that seemed efficient for me as a fake farmer let me just knock this out now but i think the reason we could do that is because seasons at the moment doesn't have any kind of a penalty for preparing your fields too early that's the sort of stuff that I would put into seasons, where if you prepare a field, right, and then you let it set for more than, oh, I don't know, whatever, one transition to the next season. So if you prep it in the fall and then it goes to winter, it, it needs to be prepped again. And that feature is not in the game. So I got away with that, prepping my fields in the summer and fall for the following spring. But I don't think that's a real farming thing. I think that's actually no good. So not going to do that anymore not going to do that anymore we're going to uh we're going to prep the fields just before we seed them so i guess what i'm getting at is if we're putting in winter crops yes i will prep those fields right now if we are not putting in winter crops those fields will just have to either lie fallow till spring or i can put in a cover crop maybe i'll put in some oilseed radish which again is a thing that i never do but that would be ah interesting if i hmm let me think about this we've got the we've got the chaff mod running so if i turn this field up under right now i believe we have one layer of fertilizer if i plant oilseed radish that's another one that when you plow that under that counts for one or two layers of fert but does it stack ah you see what i'm getting at if we plant oilseed radish and then turn that field under in the spring to plant canola again, will it count? Will that count as one layer of fertilizer or two or possibly three? Three, I think, would not be realistic. We that would be like we wouldn't even want to hope for that because that would be kind of silly. But one or maybe two. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so that is a possibility right there that if that we will uh, we will seed all these fields this this late summer, this fall, some of them will seed with winter crops. Some of them will seed with oil seed radish. Okay, very cool, very cool. I know it seems like we're just sitting here waiting for Clara, but this the field is nearly done. It's only got another couple minutes and, uh, and we're coming up on 18 minutes. So I think by the time Clara is done and we load up the tipper and haul it down to the BGA, I think we'll be just about done with the episode so it does i know it's a little boring it's a little boring you're just sitting here listening to me listening to me yakking but you know what i'm sitting in an airbnb playing a video game and talking to myself so who's really winning here i we're you know possibly neither one of us are winning i don't know i don't know uh what else is going on oh when i went down to the bga to sell my first load of canola i saw that i had not put away my belt system and when i did try to put it away it was totally bugged out. And I think it had something to do with Gearbox, which is odd because that is, those are base game implements. And I know Gearbox is, is really pretty stout on base game. Like Gearbox covers all the base game self-propelled vehicles and the belt system, they are technically self-propelled, even though you know, it's kind of a hokey workaround, but whatever. But uh, it, Gearbox was completely bugged out. Like Neither one of them would really drive. I couldn't control them. They wouldn't go into reverse. So I ended up just selling both of them. And that will account for another 10,000 euro that we have in our checking account right now. And we did kind of take a loss because we only used them for like one day just to sell the silage. And I think we took, I want to say about a 30 or 40% beating on the depreciation. But eh, you know, what can you do? That's just, that's just part of the game. It's just part of the game. There's nothing you can really do about it. So that is uh, 
that's where some of that extra money came from. But other than that, yeah, man, I'm just, uh, I'm digging FS17. Now, if you follow the channel, and if you're into Farm Sim, you did see that I did an FS19 video of a map called Marwell Manor by Oxygen David. And, uh, and I really liked it. I really liked it. But I have to say uh, that FS17 and FS19, to me, it's like they're almost two completely different games. They're just really, really different. And uh, they, they play differently. And I mean in terms of gameplay, not, not necessarily FPS or graphics or render or anything else. But the, the actual style of play for the two sims is so radically different for me. And I, I don't know what's going to happen with 19. I feel like some things are changing in the mod community. I feel like some things have changed in the specific mod community for farm sim. As far as people moving around, going different places, uh, becoming affiliated with different projects. I don't know. I really don't. So uh, so we'll see what happens with 19. I mean, from from the jump, when we saw that it didn't have seasons, people immediately started saying, well, you know what? If Realismus modding doesn't make seasons for it, somebody will make something like seasons. Either there will be a bootleg port of seasons by a third party, Shady, or there will be a, a legitimate uh, third party application, either a... I know what I'm trying to say, but the words aren't coming out. There will either be a like a validated port of seasons for 19 via the original mod maker through a new mod maker, or Clara looks like she's uh, getting into the ganja over there. I don't know what's going on. I'm keeping an eye on her. Or somebody will just uh, make another one without their blessings. It'll it'll get there, is what I'm saying. Somebody will make some kind of a Seasons mod for FS19. But until they do, it, it's just a really different kind of game for me. It really is. It's pretty. Uh, I feel like the, the graphics have kind of resolved themselves a little bit with some of the patches. But it, for me, it's just a strange game to play because I really don't know what to do next. I'm just having a sip of the Coke. So... Uh, so now, what's interesting is when I was when I was trying to bring in this canola off camera, it was a few hours. I sat here just harvesting canola manually. I mean, I did have the, the combine on a worker, but it's a terribly small combine. And just making trips back and forth and, you know, even getting up field seven with this tipper empty is still kind of an adventure. And, and I was doing this and I thought, man, I don't want to be doing this. I just want this to be done. I don't want to do what I don't want to do. I just, I want to do what I want to do. And I had an epiphany, a revelation. It was, it, it was as though the clouds parted and I had perfect clarity. Truly an epiphany. Or, you know, I just thought of something. I don't know, it's probably more the latter. I thought of something. I thought, that's why people don't like seasons. Because they don't want to do what they have to do. It's a video game. They don't want to have to do anything. They want to do what they want to do. And I think that is, you know, that sort of clarified things for me. And I, it gave me maybe a different understanding of, of how people play this game. Is, Yeah, some people don't want structure. They just want to sit down and do whatever they want to do. And when you play with Seasons, that's not an option. You have to do what, what Seasons will let you do. And seriously, some people don't want that. They just want to play with the equipment. So I can tell you, uh, I can tell you, I've been playing that uh, the division. As you know, I'm almost—I wouldn't say I'm done, but I'm sort of end game. I mean, I have everything I want, and I'm—I'm I'm just doing co-op missions on legendary, the same ones over and over. Like, there's nothing left. There's no more DLC. There's no more. Like, I've done everything, and my character is built. Oh yeah, Clara needs. Clara needs. Uh, some assistance. I'm coming, sweetie. I got you. I got you, boo. This is, uh, things are just going crazy down here. I guess this field was not quite big enough to do lengths, but we, we really should have been cut in a headland and then done lengths, because you go roundy roundy, and after a while, it just goes all crazy boo boo. Right. So, put that spool up again. 
So, uh, yes, division, end game, have all the stuff. Yep, all my gear sets are classified, all my weapons are maxed out, everything is optimized. My character is just an absolute powerhouse. And, uh, and there's really nothing to do with it. Which sounds really strange to say, but yeah. Now, on Ghost Recon Wildlands, much more of a story. And I'm working my way through the story, but that's interesting also because when you hit level 30, like in a lot of Ubisoft games, I don't know why they pick level 30, but when you hit level 30, it typically opens up some options for you. And the options are very often to, like, really go next level. And I thought, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll do it. It gives you access to much better weapons and, you know, some, some really cool stuff. So I thought, yeah, let's do it. So that's called Tier 1. So we're, we're Tier 1 in Ghost Recon Wildlands. And, uh, well, it, it's the Tier 1 program where actually you start at Tier 50, you're trying to get to Tier 1. But we're, I think, about Tier 35 right now. It's like a golf score. The lower it is, the lower the number, the better you're doing. So we're, we're working our way down that down that ladder to get all the way to tier one, which is like the highest level that you can get to in the game, and you get all kinds of bonuses. But that's not the point. The point is, is realistic and slow paced and sort of stealthy and Metal Gear Solid and, and tactical as the game was, level one through level 30, you get to that tier one stuff and it just becomes a cartoon. And it was, it was really, like what brought it home to me was I had to, I had to extract somebody, I had to rescue somebody. So you sneak in all stealthy all solid snake and you you grab this fool and you bundle him into an armored vehicle and then you try to like drive out of this facility and you have to get to an extraction point and they're chasing you but everything went crazy cars were like throwing themselves off cliffs at me if you play ghost recon wildlands you know what i'm talking about and uh it really became like very silly and very cartoony like bumper cars, and the entire time that this is going on, my armored vehicle has a, a rotary cannon on top of it, right? The like the gun from the uh, from the warthog, right? You know the one I'm talking about. Most guns say like cat 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 cat. This is the gun that that says brah, right? You know the one I'm talking about, right? That gun, the mini gun, yeah, and uh, that's mounted on my armored vehicle. And I am, like, spraying vehicles with this thing for 15 and 20 seconds at a time from a distance of, like, 10 meters. Which, if you know anything about guns and or video games, you know that that, that gun just... It, it's like the destroyer of worlds. So this went on for, like, two or three minutes. I had to drive from one side of the map to the other. And the whole time I'm driving, I'm being chased by these cars that are just throwing themselves at me. And I am spraying them, hosing them with my minigun. And that's it. You just, you just do that for a few minutes. Extremely cartoony and very, very disappointing. So I get that, you know, everybody comes at games from a different angle. Everybody comes at games with different expectations. And different things are fun to different people. You know, I totally get that. So, I know that realism is not for everybody. You know, Ubisoft didn't do that because people hated it, right? Ubisoft did that because people like that. If if they tested it and people said, "No, dude, this is this is ridiculous," but I I guess you know after thirty levels of tactical realism, let's have a little fun. You know, let's play some video games. Maybe I don't know. I'm speculating. But when I when I bring that back to uh, when I bring that back to what the hell game were we playing? Farming Sim. <laughs> oh man, my brain like totally went away there for a second. When I bring that back to Farm Sim, and, and it's we've we've talked about this before. We want realistic farming. Not everybody does. Not everybody does. So uh, so what do you do? What do you do? I guess you configure the game to play the way you want it to. I guess that's the easiest answer. I don't I don't know man like I said I'm just sitting in an Airbnb playing video games talking to myself what can you do right where are we at on time 
just about 30 minutes. Let's run this over to the BGA. We'll sell it. And canola harvest is completely done. Completely done. And we finished it on camera. That was my goal. Next week, I don't know. What do you want to do? You want to do grass work? You want to start spreading muck? Do you want to buy some sheep? I don't know. I've been thinking about that. I just bought pigs on Dolmas Laskowitz. And I don't think we have enough money to start a dairy. So maybe we get some sheep going. All right. Okay. He, he asked rhetorically. Yeah, man. <laughs> I guess answer in the comments if you have some thoughts about that. What do you want to do next week? Do you want to uh, get the slurry and the subsoiler going? on field seven do you want to get some sheep going at the sheep meadow or do you want to uh do some grass work because i think the grass is if it's not up now for second cut i can just skip ahead time and it will be up so i don't know i don't know i did get some really nice comments about Donald laskowitz and i think you know as i've been trying to figure out what i want the channel to look like i'm trying to figure out time initially my videos were a lot longer i was going like an hour i'm trying to be right around 30 minutes now it's my new goal and i also because we're doing kind of a real like slow play model i thought let's let's go you know 50 60 100 episodes and i feel like you know one per week that's just that's just too long so I think we're going to try to go between, I don't know, maybe 25 and, and 35 episodes per farm. I think that's enough time to see and do just about everything there is on a farm. Because we're, what, this is like episode 10, maybe? 9 or 10? And we just finished our harvest. So what, let's do some animals, you know, and we've already done grass work. Yeah, you see what I'm getting at. So... So also, yeah, let's let's figure out uh, what we want to do because we don't have an infinite number of episodes to do it. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm not making sense today. I'm kind of worried about myself. Hope I didn't bump my head. You know what I mean? Like you bump your head and you don't realize it, but everybody else does. Oh, oh, the humanity. Right. Take this back up to the top of the hill. I will call it. And that'll be right about 30 minutes. So yeah, canola, done and done. We made some money. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. The thing that I that I like about this map compared to Donald's Laskowitz is almost a complete absence of loan. Our loan here is uh, like a quarter of what it is in Donald's Laskowitz. And we had a much more profitable crop. Now, we've got, uh, we're running the Geomods for Seasons, and I'm curious, there we go, would be legit. I'm curious if that is affecting pricing as well. I'm curious, because our wheat prices, come on, there you go. Our wheat prices are not, um, not too good in Poland. And our canola was not too good here. Silage prices are terrible, both places, I think. So, yeah, I'm curious. I, I would assume that they do. Yeah, I guess I could just pull the XML apart and look. Mr. Smarty Pants, if I'm so curious, right? Just effing look. So maybe I'll do that. See if they change the prices at all, modify the prices. Now, this is interesting. And I said this, I think, a couple episodes back. This tipper. I mean, that's a couple tons of tipper. That's that's a pretty big piece of agricultural equipment. It's not the biggest tipper you can get, obviously. But that's a big one. And this tractor, I think, is, what do we say, 180 horsepower? And we will... We'll have to put a little effort into getting up this hill, even empty. So, yeah, Field 7 is... That, man. That is pretty, pretty stout. That's a grade, yo. Field 7 is my nemesis, but we we did it. We did it. Field 8 is no slouch either. Right. Going around here. Going around here. Beautiful. Unlock the hubs. Unlock the diffs. And I'm just going to pull this right over by the, uh, by the 1660 because they both need to be washed before they're put away. There you go. 
fantastic. I'm going to pull it up right here. Right here. I think. Yeah. That's us done. What do you say? Can we get these both in the same frame? Not really. Not really. Let's do this. Yeah, it's a nice thumbnail right there, folks. Thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Farming Simulator 17 from Coldborough Park Farm. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Man.